Welcome everybody and thanks for joining our Protocols I.O. webinar. My name is Clady Helena and I'm responsible for business development at Protocols I.O. And today I'm going to be talking about private and secure protocol sharing for biotech. Uh, I want to let you know that this is the session is being recorded and we're going to send the link of the recording to everybody that registered to this webinar. Also, uh, everybody's muted now, but please feel free to ask questions using the chat of the Zoom app or afterwards, the, in the end of the presentation, I'm going to open to Q&A. So today I'm going to give a brief overview of how to create private groups, how to organize the files using the file manager, what if an employee leaves the lab, I'm going to talk about privacy, encryption, and exporting, our pricing plans, and Q&A. So how to create private groups? I'm going to give a brief overview about this because Anita already um, recorded our webinar about group collaboration, and that presentation can be found on our YouTube channel. So let me know if you cannot find it, and I can send you up the link. But briefly, uh, when you go to the protocols I.O. page, you have this plus sign and then you can have a drop down menu where you can choose new group. Then you go to the group editor page where you can add a title, you can a uh, name for your group, you can change the image, you can write a brief overview about what this group is about. Uh, also, you can fill the group URL, the location, and a lot of other things that you can customize. And this part is pretty much self-explanatory. But what I wanted to focus on is on the visibility setting. So here is where you can choose if your group is either public, so visible to everybody, or private and invisible. So once you click on private, the only way that um, members can join your group is by invitation only. That means that no one can see your group or so it cannot open, it's not open, it cannot, no one can join it or also no one can request you to join the group because they cannot see it. So this, you can invite people using their email address so, and you can do it right away here as you are um, creating the group, but this can also be done later on. So you can send an email with um, an invitation, or if you don't really have the email of that person, there's also a link that you can share through Slack, for example, and then people will be able to join your group through that link. So then after you created the group, can go to click on your profile page and then there is another drop down menu where you can see groups and here is my profile interface where I can see here all the groups that I am a member among those there is one that I created that is this private demo group that is the one that we're using as an example today uh, there are others that I joined and there are others that I'm followed that I followed uh, so this is the admin interface when I enter in my private group. In this one, um, in this page, you can edit the group, you can add, you can check the group folder, but, but more importantly, you can um, manage members. So if you click manage members, once people join your group, you have the ability as an admin to change their roles to either co-admin, so let's say Anita is in this group and I want to make her a co-admin, so then I'll click here. Or if you don't click here, the, the, they will be just group members. Uh, you can also uh, see what, you can also manage what they can post, if they can post news, events, jobs, what they can manage, and also you can have this checked uh, so that that person will be immediately notified about protocol comments. 
Normally, all uh, members of the group will receive a digest every two weeks with everything that happened within the group. But if you check this box to uh, one of the group members, as soon as you have one comment on your protocol, um, that person will immediately receive an email and can reply or do whatever it needs to be done. Uh, so after you create the group, your private group, every time that you create a new protocol, then you will have the option to either add it to your files, to your personal files, or you can create the protocol in one of the groups that you were a member. If you um, put the protocol under your files, you are the only one who can access and the only one that can see it. If you put the protocol in under your um, private demo group, for instance, then all the members and only the members of that private group will be able to see that protocol. So how to organize files using file manager. You can go to file manager through two ways. So either you can click on your profile page and then there is this link here or there is also another link directly in the home page. And this is the file manager, how it looks like. So here you have access to all your files, everything that is in your protocols IO account. So you have your personal files that are here and then you have a group folder where you have a subfolder with each one of the groups that you are a member. So here is the private demo group folder. So if I right click on this folder, you can adjust the folder settings. So in this, um, in the settings, you can check if you don't want anyone, so you can prevent anyone from sharing files outside the group. You can also prevent people from moving files outside the group. You can prevent the members to remove files from this uh, group folder. And also, you can disable the ability to get a DOI for the protocol, to publish the protocol, and to copy files to other storage providers uh, like uh, Dropbox or uh, Google Docs. So if you, um, you, when all those settings, they apply for all group members except the admin and the co-admin. So if you don't want uh, people to share the protocol outside, you can just check whatever is appropriate here. Uh, also, in the file manager, you can, once you are in your private group folder, you can create subfolders into the group page. And, this, and then you can uh, add files that are pertinent to your group. Uh, those files, they are visible to everybody that uh, joined the group. The other cool thing is whenever you are in your group page, you can have, um, you have all the access to the publications, to the members, uh, but also all discussions on protocol level and independent level uh, of the group, on the protocols of this group will be, you can access through here. And also you can have resources and then feed to see what's going on within the group. So what if an employee leaves the lab? Uh, protocol, they are never deleted from our website. So what you can do is, uh, as an admin, you can transfer protocols, the ownership of the protocol from one group member to the other. Uh, for example, here is our protocols uh, subfolder that we created under our private demo group. And you see that um, Lenny has one private protocol here. And let's say that Lenny is not doing a really good job at the company and he's leaving. We, he's not going to be with us anymore. So as an admin, what I can do is uh, click on the on Lenny's protocol, and then I can uh, click on transfer. 
So then I can transfer the ownership of this protocol to someone else. So I just click on the, I just write the email of the other group member that I want to be the owner of that protocol. And, and then I click transfer so that it's done. And then after that, I can come back to the manage members uh, page of the group folder, the, the group, and, and then I can just click remove. Once that person is removed from the group, they won't be able to access the group files anymore and they won't be able to even see the group on, on protocols IO anymore. Uh, privacy encryption and exporting. So the visibility of the group, as I said, uh, the private groups, they are not only private, but they are invisible. So if you see here, this is my profile page and how it looks to me. So when I open it, I know that I am a member of eight groups and I created one, I joined six and I followed one. However, if I sign out of protocol, this is the page that all the others, others can see. So people are only able to see the groups that I am a member that are public. So the public groups are there, but uh, all the three other groups that are not public, they are not even visible to everybody. So all group members, they have access to the group folder and to the sub folders. All members of the group can run protocols that are included in the group folder. And the experimental logs and results, they can be saved either in your personal folder, so that way only you can see, or you can also save them in the groups folder. And in that way, all the group members will be able to see and access that, um, that file. So that if uh, after you run a protocol, so let's say you run a protocol and then you want to save it. So you want to make sure that you remember when did you do the experiment and what was the result. So after you run the protocol, you can just uh, click save experiment and then um, protocols will ask you where do you want to save this run. And then you choose and click save. After you save it, you can go to result and, and then you can write something. You can write a note, uh, what was the result? Um, and, and then you can um, save it as well. So everybody in the group can, can see what was the result of that experiment. Uh, encryption and exporting. So all data is securely encrypted and hosted on Amazon Cloud. Uh, all group contents are visible only to group members and the admin can prevent members from exporting data out of the folder, moving data out of the folder, or even deleting data out of the folder. If your organization is too large and needs a virtual private cloud or personalized settings, those are available with our enterprise plan. So our plan, um, we do have the basic account where you are able to create as many uh, published publish protocols. Uh, so you have unlimited public protocols that you can create with this account. Um, however, you are the, the, the limit of private group protocols is only 10. So if you need more than 10 private protocols, then you should um, upgrade to a premium account. With the premium account, you can have as many, as, as many private protocols as you want. Uh, also, the storage of this uh, premium plan is uh, higher. So if you, as I told you, you can add subfolders and you can add uh, files to your folder. So then you have a higher limit to play with that. Uh, if you need some um, virtual private cloud 
or custom branding or let's say protocol import like you don't you you have tons of protocols and you don't um want to add them all yourself so then you can contact us and create an enterprise account and that's all so please feel free to unmute yourself and ask any questions and please also you can um write me an email with further questions and suggestions to clady at protocols.io thank you Does anyone have any questions? This is Lenny, not a question. Um, just for the record, the uh, scenario that Clady discussed is um, hypothetical. I'm not really being fired or leaving the company, <laughs> at least not yet. So I just wanted to make that clear. <laughs> yeah, of course. And it looks like we do have a question in the chat. Yeah, for some reason I, oh, okay, let me see, okay. Got it. Uh, the payment plans are pretty new. Only got a first email about it a month ago. When does it go into effect? Um, it's already in effect. Uh, the thing is for, uh, this is mainly for new users. So for old users, uh, we're going to give, I believe a six month period, right Lenny? That's correct. Until yes. September 1st, uh, the early adopters have uh, unlimited groups and private sharing. Yes, exactly. So for six months until September 1st, uh, everybody still is in the kind of like in the premium um, plan. But then after that, then we're going to start to enforce the free premium or enterprise account. And also a quick note, um, a quick note um, on, on that is uh, if you have a private group and at some point you stop paying, uh, your protocols will not disappear. Same thing for early adopters. If you haven't upgraded to a premium plan, you'll still be able to access all of your protocols. It's only um, for creating new ones, both in an individual account or in a group, if you try to create a new protocol, then we'll say, hey, you already have more than the five or 10, whatever the limit is, individual or group. Um, so you either need to make some of them public or switch to a uh, paid uh, subscription account. But you will still have access to all of your information, everything that's already in the platform, both for early adopters until September 1st and after September 1st, and for anyone who going forward creates a new group and then stops paying so the content will not disappear um, there's another question in the chat i was having difficulty logging in um, and was worried that it had to do with new payment plans no 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 as i just said payment plans do not affect certainly they don't affect anyone um, from early adopters uh, this is a new thing and for everybody else will never just suddenly turn you off or uh, block your access to your protocols um, if you're not paying. So you'll always have that. Uh, it will really be just about creating more content. Um, so if you have any trouble logging in, try to reset your password or email us at info.protocols.io. Other questions for me or Clady? I remember there being some confusion about what publish does. Uh, I believe that you're saying when uh, you publish a protocol, so so oh, yes, whenever you hit publish, that means that your protocol is going to be published and available to everybody to see. So if you 
want your protocol to be only into your uh, private group, then you should not hit publish. You can unmute yourself, it's better. So just a second, the person is still typing the question. And it's about the confusion around what the publish button does. Oh, that's a good question. Lady, please read it. Publish is not the correct button to hit. Yes? No, it's not. If, well, you can... So, Lady, can you read the question for everybody? Uh, when a protocol is finished and you want to share it with a group but not the world, publish is not the correct button to hit. Yes? And that's absolutely correct. Yes. Um, you, when you finish your, when you create your protocol, it is, and then you add it to the group folder, it is automatically shared with everybody that is a member of the group. But you shouldn't uh, publish, put press the publish button, because if you press the publish button, then it will be public to the whole world to see. Uh, the publish flow. Okay. So actually, I'm going to, um, if it's okay, I'm going to quickly share my screen. Uh, Clady, do you want to end your sharing so I can quickly show the difference between publish and um, sharing? Okay. Okay, great. And uh, in the chat, um, another question. So while the protocol is being drafted, I should have it hidden and then just share it when it's ready. So yes, it's completely up to you um, when you share a protocol, when you create it by default, uh, it's private and you're the only person who can see it. So here I am in my account, file manager, here is um, a private protocol, test protocol that I've created. So this is just mine. Um, and if I click share, if I click share, I can either share with people individually by email, so there's either protocols IO, and I can decide what kind of access I need to have. Is it view only? Can edit it, or is she a co-admin? Uh, alternatively, if you if this is part of a group, if this is inside a biotech, you can actually share it with the whole group. Um, and oftentimes, when biotechs are using us, when uh, or academic labs. When you create a new protocol, you'll drop it into a group folder right away. So these are the group folders, and you can drop it directly into a folder. Um, so from the beginning, the protocol you've created is visible to everybody inside the company or your research lab. And the question about publishing, so I have control of either sharing with a group um, creating the protocol directly into a folder and then it's automatically shared with the group or sharing it with individuals. And as far as the publish, you will not ever accidentally publish the protocol. So even if you click this button, it's a whole flow. So you need to give the title to the protocol. And then you have to identify who the authors are choose whether it's a working or not working protocol. So the point here is that there's a pretty involved flow. Is it a research or not research protocol? And then the last step, you have to confirm, um, you have to confirm that uh, you realize that you will not be able to edit it, that it is going to be public, it's going to get a DOI. So this is the whole publishing flow. So use the share or create your protocol directly into a group um, and don't be afraid of the publish button. It won't accidentally uh, make your uh, IP visible to others um, unless you explicitly opt into it. Okay, I'll stop the sharing here.
So while the protocol is being drafted, I should have it hidden. Uh, I think that Lenny probably uh, clarified this by uh, his uh, sharing. So it's, it's not like hidden. It's more like you choose who can have access. So once you create a protocol, let's say it's in your folder, then and it's you, you're working on that, then it's in your folder. Only you can see it. And then you choose if you want to share it uh, with this person, with the group, with whoever you want to share it. Um, and then it's up to you when you want to share it with your coworkers. And the other question, um, can I share one protocol with multiple groups? Yes, yes, that's correct. You can share one protocol with multiple groups. Okay, everybody. So again, thanks for joining us. And if you have any questions, further questions after, please uh, write me an email at clady, C-L-E-Y-D-E, at protocols.io. And I'll be happy to answer. Thanks, everybody. Bye.